YouTube, it's Brian Phillips here again with the Rare Bear. This plane is pretty cool looking. Okay, so what we're coming back to today is uh, battery selection. We're going to use a 3S35C 850 milliamp lithium polymer, also known as LiPo. It's got an XT60 on it, and of course the balanced charge lead here. If you guys are new to the hobby, just taking a look at the number of wires here will tell you how many cells are in series, hence 3S. There's three wires that are in series, so it starts out with a positive and a negative from the first cell, and then that daisy chains to the second cell, and so on and so forth, to the last cell. So in this case, this is a three cell battery, so there's four wires. This is the ground. This is actually the positive of the second cell and the negative of the third cell and so on and so forth. Um, and I, I think I might have said that verbally wrong, but you get the idea. There's a positive and negative here. There's a po positive and negative here. And then there's a positive and negative here. So if you're ever curious about that. And then these are the ultimate positive and the ultimate negative of the whole set of these cells or the cells that are in series as opposed to parallel. If they were in parallel then you would only have two main wires that go to each of the cells. So this is what's going to fly this plane or power the electronic speed control. And I know a lot of this stuff is probably you know you guys already know that stuff but uh, once in a while I like to throw some information in there for the new pilots out there. Um, like I said this probably isn't a great first time playing, but it's good to know a little bit more. Maybe you learn a little something every time you do this. Okay, so what we're doing today is we're coming back to this model. Okay, so this is a rare bear. So I have 58 models in this radio system, by the way. I have a one gigabyte external hard drive, which goes, uh, where is that thing on this unit? I think it goes in here. It's in the back, yeah, right there. It's just an SD card, and then it's got a battery that I recharge. Okay, so this battery is going to go in here, and then this is going to set on here. Now, you're probably wondering, why is it so loosey-goose, Brian? Well, it's loosey-goose because I have to find 30 centimeters or 30 millimeters back. Whoa, is there actually a little detent in there? Oh, look, there is. That's awesome. That might be the CG mark. But we're going to trust the calipers not the mold, even though the mold would probably be correct. Okay, so we're going to go to 30 centimeters back, or millimeters. Jeez, sorry guys. Yes, it is marked. There's a hole. Cool. So we don't really have to get too fancy about the CG marking, because it's already marked for us, which is great. That's actually, I really appreciate when the manufacturers do that. Okay, so I'm just stuffing all the leads down temporarily because I got to get a feel for where stuff is going to go. Okay now you'll notice this is a low wing plane so you kind of got to hang the plane upside down and I use my middle finger it's the longest finger on your hand most people's hand and you can tell that when you try to balance this thing it just wants to flop over that means it's nose heavy okay that's not necessarily a bad thing when you fly a plane like this um, a little bit nose heavy a lot nose heavy means your elevator is not going to have enough output to control uh, the pitch of the plane. And so you're going to run into problems as a result. So I'm going to try putting the battery here. Um, that's not going to actually work because the canopy may not have enough clearance. So we'll just try scooching it back a little bit and let that straddle the support there. Okay, so we got it in there now. Remember, we're just going for this point and that point. That's really good, guys. That's about perfect. So if we're going to fly this without um, a stabilizer, that's where we'd want the battery. So here's the thing. When I put my stabilizer in, the stabilizer needs to be fairly close to the center of gravity. Okay? Meaning it's got to be here. So we're going to have to hog out some of this foam. And then the battery is going to sit on top of it, which is not a super desirable thing, but it'll work okay. And the thing is... If the battery, if the 
if the A3L, this thing, um, if it sits approximately on the center of gravity, you're going to get the best results. I don't know that you can do it this way. I think you might be able to work it out. You can actually press the button and change the positional orientation. I'd really like to do it that way, but that might not be possible on this plane. I may also need to hog out in the middle here and actually slide it through from the back and then have the leads transition from one another. And then this thing, this case is big on this Redcon receiver. I'm not a really big fan of how large it is, but you can actually take that case off if you want to save a little bit of weight. And then you just have that board to manage. And to be honest, what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably just go ahead and stick this on the side with some double-sided tape is what I'm thinking I'm going to do. Remember, if this was a Lemon RX 7 channel with stabilization like I use many times, then this would actually need to be um, sort of centrally located. It does not have to be exactly on the center of gravity. Um, some people think, think it needs to be, but they would be incorrect. So I've flown planes with it way off the center of gravity. It works just fine. Is it better on the center of gravity? I think that the output is a little bit more linear. So that's a good thing generally. Um, and by the way, I was going to ask you guys if you know what prop size this is. It is not listed anywhere on the prop. Typically, you would see that in the plastic molded into it, but it's not molded in here. It looks like this is probably, I'm thinking it's like a, a six something. Okay, so we'll just slide that in there. Okay, so it looks like it's maybe 145 millimeters, 140 millimeters. So it'd be a 5.5. I'm guessing that pitch probably puts us at a 5.5, or a 5.5, 5, meaning 5.5, five, 5 inches and a half length. And then the pitch, the aggressive nature by which it passes through the air, it will move forward maybe five inches per rotation at speed, okay? Um, but it's not marked and it's not in the manual. So we'll have to guess on that when we replace them. Funny thing is sometimes those ratings don't always hold true. Okay, so the objective on this video is gonna be to work through some of these details. Obviously we worked through a few of those details already. The A3L has a manual online you can get from hobbyeagle.com. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start guessing and checking until I get it right. Um, this little capacitor will help store up charge. It can go on any of the pins. We don't have a rudder, so I might actually go ahead and plug it into the rudder. See how it says signal plus minus? Okay, so minus must be away from us. And signal must be all the way up. But I guess I don't really know that yet. We're going to go to the rudder. And this is extra weight, so you may not actually want that. But being that we're using this little rinky-dink uh, chintzy ESC, I'm going to insist on probably having something like that. Um, okay, so the second thing is we need to go ahead and regulate the ailerons. And these are flap rons, so we may have to look into whether or not this supports flap rons. I'm actually not 100% sure. It says output 1, 2, 3... So we have to get a manual for this, but for now, let's go ahead and just get it roughed up. Okay, we have three or four wires, four wires, okay, good. So the brown wire is going to go down, if we're correct on our assessment of the setup here. So I'm going to go to ailerons for one of them, for sure. And then I'm going to go to elevator, for sure, for the other one. Okay, so this is where you transmit in the signal. And then from the output, you just basically are going to swap them, okay? So I have elevator in my hands right now, so we'll deal with that first. So elevator is here. So we can go ahead and unplug elevator. We can plug elevator into the output one, two, or three. I do not know which one it needs to be. We'll figure out if it's correct. We'll do a little guess and check method. So I don't like reading manuals unless I have to, which is true in all areas of life. Okay, so this is aileron. 
So we're going to receive an aileron output from this output. Okay. And if it doesn't support flaperons, then we'll find that out soon enough. Okay. So then our plug from one aileron is going out here, and then this, this is the other aileron. So we'll go ahead and plug that to output two, and we'll just guess and check. Okay, so now keeping in mind this needs to be spatially located a certain way, I'm not 100% sure exactly what that is. So what we'll do is we'll probably just double-sided tape them into position in the meantime. I could use this, but I have so much of this stuff I'm just going to use a little chunk of it. Stuff's expensive. I got it from a customer that was using it as a cup holder. She said, hey, do you want that? I said, yeah. So basically, this will just act as a temporary means to kind of hold this where I want it without gluing it in. Okay, so sometimes this stuff is a real pain in the neck to separate. And I'm going to show you the way that I usually end up having to do it. Take an X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade. And then you can get in there and just kind of spin it. As you can see, this, this plastic must have a little mold release on it. But like I said, this isn't a permanent solution, so I'm not too worried about it wanting to peel back. It'll hold enough for our testing. And then if we like where it sits, then we can go ahead and wipe down with alcohol this plastic first. Okay, so we can set that off to the side, let it roll off the table. Preferably don't land on your foot. That's where it always seems to go when I'm dealing with this. Okay, so it's just temporary because obviously we need the battery to go in there somewhere. And I don't want to step on this little son of a gun, so. Alright, so we have the Rare Bear throttle cuts on. Scissors, actually let's move these over here so they're in a safer spot. And then let's go ahead and stick the battery in here. Again, this is not where it's going to ultimately end up. Okay, so we have power. The A3 is hooked up. Everything is turning on. This thing takes a second to initiate. Okay, so it's initiated. So elevator is, we have our outputs wrong. Ailerons, okay. So we need to go ahead and change that right now. So output one and output two just need to switch. Okay. I think the reason they label them out one, out two, is because you can assign how they're going to behave. Elevator. Now it's going backward. So we'll have to resolve that at some point shortly. And yes, this is not a permanent solution. It's just a means to an end for testing. Okay? Just so you guys know, I'm not planning on leaving that there. That'd be a horrible place to put the battery. Okay, so elevator. That's wrong. It's backward. So we can either change our output here or we can change the position of this. Okay. Servo setup, travel, sub trim reverse, elevator reversed. Okay. So now when we pull back, it goes up and push down, it goes down. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is ailerons. 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 They're going the correct direction. Now let's see if we're going to correct in the same direction that we need to. Okay. We are correcting in the wrong direction because as I move this wing up, this sh should go up to counter that. It's going with it. Now this one's not changing, you'll notice. That's because I don't know that I can support flap rounds. I know I can't support flap rounds the way I have it currently configured. So like there's nothing actually telling this aileron what to do, but this one's jock jockeying around. Okay, now watch the elevator. Up. Yep, it's also backwards. So there's two ways you could fix this. You could either reprogram this A3L to be positionally correct, or you could actually um, flip it upside down, and then that would take care of both axes of controls. So let's just try that real quick just for fun. 
we're not going to do that on a permanent mechanism. We're not going to do that on our permanent um, setup, but I just want to see if we can get away with that for now. Okay, so you see I've just flipped that up upside down 180 degrees, okay? So now, yep, the ailerons are wrong, but the elevator's fixed, okay? So the elevator is not moving a lot, so it's hard for you guys to see at home, I'm sure. I'm trying to keep the camera so you can see, okay? So that's our next thing we got to do is I got to actually go get a manual now and figure out what to do to configure this A3L. And at which point we will also go ahead and figure out our flaperons. And you know what? I'm thinking I'm going back in my memory bank here and I'm remembering that the gains are in absolute position. So gain one, gain two. So I'm going to turn the gain all the way up on one of them. See how it's going the wrong way? Now I'm going to go all the way down with it. Yep, still going the wrong way. So my experience is it's always easier to turn the gains way up to try to get the behavior to be exaggerated. And that way you can see what direction things are going. Okay. Alright, so guys, we're going to get the manual. We'll come right back. Alright, folks, I'm back. I linked to this manual on my video in the description. So, this is just, I'm just going to go in reverse order. Page 5, page, page 4, this is the one that's the most important. They have this in English and Chinese, so whichever one you need. This is the one where you're going to be setting it up by pressing the buttons on here. So you can choose the wing type, standard or delta. So if you had a delta wing, then you would set that up in your radio as a standard wing and a standard tail. And then you would use this um, to hook up the outputs properly, okay? So what we need to do is we need to reverse the direction of the elevator and the aileron. But I'm noticing in here, there's no way to actually set up flaperons, which is part of the reason why I have in the past not gone with a a3L and I go with an A3 instead. The A3L is like the lower like economy level and an A3 is actually a higher level. So if you look at this it's kind of interesting because it doesn't say L on there but this is actually the A3L manual because you can tell from the top of the manual page it says A3L. Um, one of the better Chinglish manuals I've ever seen um, they actually use proper English most of the way through. I remember when we were doing our profile planes a while back, we had really good luck working with the A3L. And so one thing I hadn't set up yet is I hadn't set up my actual gain. So I'm going to do that real quick too. So we're going to grab one more of these and we're actually going to grab the Y cable because we do... Here's the, here's the problem with using flap rounds the way I've got it set up right now, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and fire it up and get the rotation um, of our axis first. And yes, this is, this is compatible with an S-Bus um, on a Futaba fast, fast system, which is not DSMX, which is what I'm using here, okay? Um, so there is... PPM on here. I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be compatible. I don't think it is. I don't have any interest in figuring it out either. Okay, so the gain adjustment. There are two knobs. We're going to set up a third, which is going to be on this knob. And I believe I have that set to auxiliary three already. Okay, so I don't know if this has enough channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I need to make a reassignment in system setup, which is gonna be under channel sign. And you can see, right now we're set up to flaperons. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to this. I know I jumped around a little bit here, guys. But when you operate this system and you have flaps deployed, you're going to lose your stabilization on the one that's down and being stabilized because it thinks you're giving it full input. 
but you're also not going to have any stabilization at all on the other side. Now, you could hypothetically have stabilization on just one aileron. However, if you get into the complex mixing, you're going to defeat a lot of your differential, which means one goes down less than the other or vice versa, depending on how you set up your aileron. And you're also going to lose uh, your flap rons in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a Y splitter, which is a little bit of a bummer but I'll live with it, it's fine. It's not the end of the world, okay? So auxiliary two is no longer gonna be plugged in there, it's gonna go back. Um, so output one, it's gonna unplug from the gyro. I'm just gonna make sure we're not tangled up here real bad, which we're not. And then these two are gonna go back into our Y cable, which is going to treat the ailerons as one aileron. Now you wouldn't have to change your radio system um, it would be okay in flap round mode, but I'm gonna actually go ahead and set it. So this is gonna be output one. We want the brown wire down. And this is kind of a bummer. I don't I don't like admitting defeat, but I know I had to do it the last time I had an A3L I worked with. Okay, then we need one more channel. In this case, I want it to be the highest channel possible. It's auxiliary two. No real specific rationale to that, but and I'm going to go to, I can't remember if it's mode, flight mode, or master gain. Hmm. I think I want master gain. Actually, I kind of want both. So I think I'm going to, if I have enough wires, I'll do both, which I do. So I'll do both of those. So I have a stabilizer on off and then master gain like I normally do on my Lemon RX. Now you guys are starting to figure out why I go with the Lemon RX just by watching this. And you'll be surprised, this stabilizer works great. Um, but it doesn't support flap rons. They're immediately there's a strike against this one. Similar price point. Um, but this thing does a really nice job of stabilization. Okay, so we'll just go auxiliary one for this one. Okay, so auxiliary one is gonna be our mode selection in this case. Auxiliary 2, as defined by these positions on the Redcon receiver. Okay, so the setup change is going to be under channel assign. We want auxiliary 1. Well, we got to go back to the wing type. Aircraft type is flap round. We're going to go back to just normal. And then we'll go back to channel assign, which allows auxiliary 1 to be auxiliary 1. Okay, so auxiliary 1 is going to be assigned to auxiliary one and then auxiliary two is still going to be auxiliary two but if you go over to next then you can make your assignment of which switch you want to tie to what thing okay so in my cat in my case mode is going to be already a tie to d which is what i would normally use for that and then e would by default be assigned to um, auxiliary two i want to change that to the right knob so i'm just going to scroll down to Actually, I can move the knob if I highlight this. I think I can just move. Nope, can't do that with the knob. There we go. And then I'm going to just clear this so it's inhibited so as not to confuse things later. Okay, so now I'm going to go back out, let it reboot. Now if I go over to my monitor, see auxiliary 2 is now controlling the change on that. And then D, the switch, which is labeled D, is going to control the mode. All right, cool. So, this will all come together at the end, I promise, guys. It's just a lot of little steps. It's not hard. If you do it once or twice, you'll get used to it. But please don't ask me how to set up your plane from scratch. I will not be able to tell you. Some of the stuff you... I don't want to call it guess and check, but there is a certain level of that. you got to guess and check to see if your directions are the right way. Okay, so now everything is hooked up. Okay. We have to wait for that flashing light to stop. That means it's ready to go. Okay, now it's active with the red light. See how it changes colors? So one's gyro on, one's gyro off, and one's uh, uh, just uh, something in the middle. I forget what the middle step is. Let's see what the modes are. I forget what the modes are, guys. I apologize. Remote master gain. Okay, so that's going to be that's going to be through this. Okay, so I believe the stabilizer is off when the light's red. Nope, it's on. Okay, so now it's off, and now it's like heading hold. 
So they operate a lot the same. So master gain all the way up, I assume, and then all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. Now, if you didn't have two channels, you could do like I do a lot of times when I'm trying to steal a channel on the Lemon RX, which I've done on several of my builds. Um, and you could actually just use your master gain and then you could emulate the on off setting by changing instead of instead of using a mode button You could just turn it real really far down Now I'm going to try a trick here servo setup travel So auxiliary 2 is my master gain. I'm going to turn my knob to the middle So I can adjust top and bottom. I want to make the range even more extreme Okay, so I got 150 up and down So you can turn it way down so it's actually even more output. Okay, so you can tell it's going the wrong way now because the ailerons are going the same direction that I'm rolling the plane. And you can tell the elevator's working because it's, it's going the wrong way as well. So what we have to do is we have to now go into the menu structure, which is fairly easy if I recall. I think you just press the button. Okay, oh, here's your normal modes. Okay, so normal mode is normal stabilization mode and then there's the gyro off, and then there's a 3D flight mode, which is red. Okay, I personally want my stabilizer on with this switch the other way, so I'm gonna change that in my system setup. I'm gonna go to reverse, and I'm just gonna reverse auxiliary one, okay? So now this is regular stabilization, off, and then 3D mode. Now, if you knew you weren't gonna use 3D mode, I can show you how to mix that out, but we're not gonna mix that out. Um, 3D mode is kind of like heading hold, okay? So as you're going down, it's just basically a higher gain level, a lot higher gain level. Parameters, when entering a function, okay. All right, setup methods. Setup menu. Press and hold down the button for two seconds. There's a button right here, guys, okay? Release it when the LED starts to blink red and blue rapidly. In the setup menu, the LED should, blah, 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 should blink n number of times. And then what you do is you look at the chart on the next page. Okay, see this? That'll tell you what you're setting. So I'm going to go ahead and press this for two seconds. Okay, now it's flashing red. Now it's one wing type. One, two is the aileron gyro direction. One, two, three. So I'm going to go into this. This is elevator. I pressed it once and it says normal, which is blue. I want to reverse it, so I'm going to press it again. Now it's red. And then I think once it's red, you can go ahead and just wait longer. And then it sets the value. Three, four. We don't want to mess with this rudder because we're not using that. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. Where's that five? Servo frequency, we'll just leave it at 50 hertz. Four, five, six. Standard is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Flat is the standard, so we'll leave that. Okay, one, wing type is fine. One, two, we'll press it momentarily. It's blue, then we'll press it one more time. It'll turn red, then we'll just let it save. Now when it gets to elevator, we'll check that as well. Okay, so we waited for it. One, two, three, press it once, it should be red. Yep, it is, good, so now that we're done, um, when back, when back to the menu, long press the button again to exit the setup menu. So press and hold it, long button. Okay, so now we're back to regular. Now I am going to go ahead and reset this just to make sure everything saves. So power it down. Allow the capacitor to de-energize. It might take a second. Mine's really quick. Okay, so now we have, this is checking the center of the stick positions. Okay, so like if you have trims, it's like right now I'm at zero, 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 and zero. So like if you had a little bit of trim in there, huh, see? So the elevator's making it go up and down. The ailerons are making it roll and roll, okay? So now let's see if the stabilizer's going the right direction. And you'll find that the easiest way to do this is a smooth motion. See, it goes up, see it goes up. Don't try to check both directions, this is a pain in the butt to do that then. Okay, now the elevator. If you can't see, put your finger on it and hold it. Yep, up, down. And what I'll do real quick for you guys so you can see a little better at home, I'll actually take a little bit of tape. Of course, I'm using clear tape here. Here, we'll use this tape. 
Watch this, guys. This will help you to visualize what I'm talking about. Some of you are probably thinking, geez, Brian, we know exactly what you're talking about. Well, I know you do. Okay, so here we go. So I'll just fold this so that it shows us the, an exaggeration of the elevator. Okay, so now watch this. Boy, that worked crappier than I thought it would. Have I made anybody puke yet? So anyway, the idea is that's very critical that it's going in the correct direction. I give you about a, I'll give you a 99% guarantee if you have them going the wrong way, you're gonna crash. Okay, so now the last thing to, to figure out is just getting everything mounted, because that's all the settings we need to do on this. So we'll go ahead and file that with our manual. I keep all my manuals. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but I keep all my manuals for all my planes over here. And if I need them, I've got them. I can usually look most of that stuff online, but sometimes it's not as easy as you might think to find older manuals. Okay, so let's see if this fits up here, just out of curiosity. That'd be kind of cool if I could just squish everything down and it worked. But my guess is it's not going to CG out right because the nature of all this crap in here. You want to be really nice to those antennas. I've not been super nice to them. And then having them right next to the heat sink in the, elev or in the ESC, definitely not the best move. But I'm just curious if it'll fit in here. I'm going to mar this up when I slide this in because there's some Velcro in here. And you know what? I don't even think... I don't even know for sure if I'm going to use that Velcro. I'm very tempted to take it out. Let's see how far off we are. Whoops. Okay, just feeling for those little detents, guys. I uh, see it's tail heavy, guys. So that's unfortunate. I could possibly try to move some of this stuff. Man, I gotta glue those. I gotta glue those wires down. I don't think it's gonna go. I think I'm gonna have to move all this crap back. Which is fine, not really a big deal. Okay, so closest to the CG as you can get it is where that's gonna end up. Okay, so that's gonna get really annoying if I don't do that. So now we need to do cable management and then this thing's gonna be ready to maiden. So, all right, let's talk about cable management now. Obviously you can undo or redo any of this stuff you want at any time, but in my case, I like to have something to keep the wires from popping out easily, but something that's removable with a little bit of effort, i.e. hot glue. You could use CA actually, but the CA will probably be a little bit too brittle for a good application. So now this Y cable, it's short, it's acceptable, uh, in terms of the amount of space it's taking up, I'm just going to sneak that around. I'm just At this point, I'm just trying to untangle everything because there's not very many tangles yet, but I want to get it as good as I can get it. And then having this linkage here is kind of a pain in the butt because there's just not going to be a good spot to put stuff, I'm guessing. This does not need to be level at all, unlike with the 7 channel with stabilization on a Lemon RX. Okay, so I slid that down to the bottom of the channel. So my next move, I could actually change the mode of this so that it's actually riding vertical too, but then that doesn't really gain me anything. This Redcon box is just huge, guys. I'm thinking I might have to take that off. Let's just try. Let's see how bad that screws us up. It's nice to have the labels when you're not familiar with a receiver, but honestly, now that it's set up, I probably won't need to be super familiar with it. Just sliding this in, it's gonna allow this case to come right off. I really like the grommets on there. That's nice. Very nice, actually. I may have to unplug these to get the case off. Yeah, because it wraps all the way around. That's going to give us better support. But this case is just too dang big. So, trick. Trick of the day, guys. Drop. Drop your screwdriver first. Next, you're going to come over and get your hot glue gun. You're going to smell it. It's taking forever, so I'm just going to give it a little help. It's all part of the show here. Make sure you don't catch anything else on fire. Okay, so now that that's nice and hot, I can go ahead and move that over here. And I'm going to show you one trick. 
when you've got these things in an orientation, you don't have to refigure it out. You can do it like this. It's a super easy, quick way to do it. And if you have a gap, you can even fill the gap a little bit. Just keep in mind, all this crap does add up. You know, you do end up losing some performance with all the weight that you add to a plane. Especially a plane of this size. It's fairly small. But some things are just worth it to me. This is one of them. Um, I'll plug this into the ceiling here. Okay. So now we can keep that tip hot so I don't have to bring the torch out again. Alright guys, so now, now that this glue is set up, ish, really good way to do wing joints by the way. Okay, so we're just going to unplug this very carefully. See, they stay in their exact orientation. Okay, so we'll just slip this out carefully. Hmm, looks like it's well constructed actually. It's got a little capacitor on it already, which is kind of cool. But I'm going to have no freaking clue what we're dealing with in terms of connections because there's no labels that I can see. I don't like that there's a board here. But that's the way they bust their power here. So if you did ask bus, you could take that whole thing out. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, so I think that's the alignment. So I'm just going to take this. Yeah, it looks like actually I'm off by one. So it needs to be like that. Okay, so now, normally I'd be gluing this here, right here, to just give myself a little bit of mechanical connection strength. Remember, that's not to keep it from ever getting out of there. It's going to eventually unplug if I need to change something. But it's going to give me the advantage that I'm looking for. All right, so you see how I've got this ESC line, how it's having to go all the way up and all the way back down? I'm actually a little bit tempted to unplug that and poke a hole down there so I can bring this all down. Because I need to make room for the A3L. I'd really like the A3L to go right here. So, alternatively, I might actually just hog this out like we talked about. But I'm worried about losing this structure here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just cut a big hole for all these wires, this whole chunk of wires and the little capacitor to come out. By the way, that capacitor can plug in anywhere on the receiver as well. Um, it doesn't have to plug into the A3L. In fact, it probably shouldn't plug into the A3L. It'd make better sense to plug in over here. But for now, let's just do this. You see what I'm talking about? I want to drop that down in there so that it's situated as close to center as possible. We'll just start cutting. We'll just start cutting. I don't think we're going to screw ourselves over too bad. And then when this is all done, we can go ahead and decorate the plane to make it cool looking. If we care. usually try to save the decorations for after I know the plane's going to be awesome. Okay, so just cutting that down. This one's wiggly as heck. Okay, I don't want to cut these wires, so I'm going to flip the blade upside down. Yeah, about like that. Okay, so then another type of X-Acto knife blade that works nice. This is an X-Acto brand. It's some other brand from China somewhere. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and try to take this out. At a bit of an angle, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so we're just popping these out. I like to keep these little chunks of um, the higher quality foam because if I have to repair these planes and I've got a little something to work with, like right here, except as you can see, I got those fixed pretty nice. So not really a big issue. So I need to hog this out, and there's a couple of different ways. I've actually got a bent blade that works nice for that. See, it's got just a little bend on it. And then here, this is when I'm going to try to set off my fire alarms. Just put this up into this area here. Get that a little bit hot. 
Okay, and then we're just going to come in here and cut this little little channel right here. Cut it nice, nice easy cut. Super easy. And then we'll use a blunt object to rip it out. Okay. Alright, so the whole objective here is to make room for the A3L. And I can use that hot blade again. It's probably still warm enough to help me out here a little bit. Nope, I lost most of the heat already. Okay. Just come in here and get it so it's flat. Got a fan here with a little filter. This is about the time when my uh, fire alarm will go off. Okay. All right, perfect. So we get a nice little pocket for the A3L to set into. Let's see if we can reach it down there now. And this is going to offer some structural strength for us as well. Just the actual case and cabinet of that device. See, that's a pretty nice little spot for it. It's not perfect. I'd like to square it up some. You don't want it to sit at an angle because it can actually cause the plane to yaw as you're flying. Which I know you guys are thinking I'm full of crap, but go ahead and try it in your plane and tell me how it works out. So this is where this is where it gets real. If you can get this stuff done right, you actually have a really nice flying plane. And yeah, you could put this plane together and have it in the air in 20 minutes if you weren't filming it for sure. But um, it would suck. So I'm going to show you how to make it not suck. And to be honest with you, some of you guys don't like stabilizers. All the more power to you. I like them. And I can always turn it down if I don't like the way it flies. I can turn it down so I have the best of both worlds and I have it on demand on the maiden flight. There is a lot of value in that. Okay, so those wires are for the brushless motor, of course. And I'm going to redo this tape and all that. I've just got this little 3M tape on there still. I like it. The only thing I don't like is if I were to bump into that with the battery, there's a little setup button. I do not want to enter setup while I'm trying to fly. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of protection around that. The other thing I don't like is having this wire capable of running into the brushless bell housing. Well, that's actually a motor mount down there, but I don't want them to be able to hit the, the prop shaft either. And we talked about that earlier, uh, right at the beginning of the build if I recall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just slide those over. I'd really like to bring those leads around so that they're coming up here if it's possible. I just don't know if I've got enough. The connectors that they picked are so long that it's probably not going to like to do that very well. Let's see if I can get it to flip over this little ledge. That might work. Yeah, that might actually work there, guys. I think we're good. We'll, of course, test our motor, make sure we didn't break any of the solder joints in these connections here before we get too far. Let's go ahead and just put a little bit of hot glue down there. See, I got it on the prop shaft, guys. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. And you're going to want to get that off of there as soon as possible, which I just did. Luckily, it cools super quick because it's steel and it's got some mass to it. Okay, so, sorry I hit you. Okay, so we're gonna grab a Q-tip and we're just gonna move that glue away from the motor mount. We don't wanna transmit the heat from the motor mount. Okay, so we'll just kinda let that cool. And I wanna totally take any little residual glue that I might've got on there. Just control it. Yeah, it's still pretty warm. Not to the point of burning me, but I want to shape it, make sure it's not going to be a problem for me. Got a little bit touching the bottom of the motor mount. 
I don't think it's going to be enough to transmit the heat and totally melt that blob that I dropped right there. So now I want to secure this here a little bit as well. Just over the top, we'll just do one little roll. And we'll kind of do the same thing. The reason I use these Q-tips on a foam plane like this to spread the hot glue is because obviously the hot glue doesn't have any reason to cool when it goes up against foam. Um, so you can actually get those wet and then um, you'll cool the glue. That was a nice shot, guys. Did you see how that went? All right, perfect. So now this thing, these, these grommets are not going to be necessary. So I'm going to slip those down right next to the body of the receiver board. I kind of like the way this is situated. I think I want to make a commitment to this spot. But let's double check if our battery will fit. Okay, so obviously this bundle of wire is going to have to be dealt with. But let's see how we're going to fit. I need a place for a voltage alarm too. But that could actually fall into this other cavity here. And there's nobody saying this has to be pretty, except for me. I want it to be pretty. So I'm going to take the extra effort to make it pretty. Okay, so the canopy sitting over here. We go ahead and just rough this in there into the approximate position. Ah, uh, that was not a very good plan. Okay, so running into a bit of a problem with all the wires, I think I probably at this point need to make a channel so I can just channel these in and around. I'm reluctantly going to go ahead and... Hmm, I might. I'm just trying to think the easiest way to do this that's going to be effective. These, as soon as I glue these, I'll figure out I want to unhook them, so just wait, wait on it. It's going to happen. Just watch, guys. One little thin strip of glue, plop those suckers side by side like that, and that's going to keep your aileron wires from being an issue later. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that issue now. Okay, so I'm going to actually... These two grommets, let's go ahead and just give us a little bit mechanical strain relief here. And what I mean by strain relief is I want to relieve the ability for this to ever get kinked at a straight 90 degree angle because this is uh, like a small coax cable. So you don't want to kink it, it'll break. It is a braided cable inside actually, but it's similar to a coax cable. Like an RG6 cable, you never want to kink those, they'll break the copper inside. Okay, we have a little bit of thickness here to work with still. Hmm. I need to take a little more material out of there. And the other option is I can make the A3L mount to the side like this. Um, and then the battery. Yeah, but see, I don't know if I want it to be sideways like that because then it's going to be further off to this side of the plane than it is to this side. So centrally located, I think, is the way. It's the way it's going to be. Need some alcohol. This project's really getting to me. Okay, we're going to wipe down that A3L with alcohol. So we can get our adhesive stuck to it. Now this, you can hot glue it, but it'd be better to use like 3M sort of tape. They do provide a couple of pads for that. Um, the rationale there is that you have a little bit of vibration dampening. Um, that's why these things aren't really designed for gas planes. There's too much vibration inherently involved. Um, all right, so let's try sticking this down in here again. Okay, so we need to... Let's go ahead and cut some, let's cut some double-sided tape. Let's get that thing stuck down there. Just regular alcohol, except I've actually replaced that into that bottle with um, just like medical grade stuff you can get at the supermarket or Walmart or Target. 
once you get that stuff at your local whatever store you prefer, then you can just put it back into your nice isopropyl alcohol bottle like that. Or just use it out of the medical bottle. Whatever trips your trigger. Oh, by the way, all that stuff expires too, so it's kind of nice if you've got some in the medicine cabinet. I'd probably rather use expired alcohol on this sort of project as opposed to, like, cleaning a wound. Just my opinion. Okay, now these wires, I'm just committing to it. I'm just committing. It's where they're going to be. It's where they're going to stay for the moment. And that can be taken off with relative ease. Okay? But for now, they're stuck where they're going to be. All right? Yes, this capacitor can actually go in parallel anywhere in the circuit, but I would have thought it maybe to make better sense over here, but we'll, we'll just do this for now, for the moment. Okay, so that's centrally located. I'm pushing it into place hard. Okay, and we've got it going up, up ever so slightly uphill. Um, I don't suspect that's going to be a big problem. It could actually present itself as a bit of a problem, but I'm willing to I'm willing to estimate that that will not be a big issue. Level and true is always better, of course, guys. All right, so that's in there now, and it's not going to give a whole lot, so I'm satisfied with that. Um, we do need to verify our battery fit at some point. So I think honestly that's a that's a pretty decent spot for that battery to sit. So we do have to get those wires through this sidewall somehow. And then that capacitor and all this crap can probably go right over here. So I think what we need to do is just make a channel. I've been reluctant to do this because I will weaken the the center of this plane a little bit, but I've got a trick for it. So we're just gonna cut that out. Then we're just gonna cut a small triangle being as sparing as we can, we're leaving a little bridge so we can replace the material after we get all these wires through, okay? So we're going to do that, and we'll cut this at an angle, probably about a 45 degree angle, just so we can get those wires down there. Then we're going to use a wider object like the handle of this tool to push that little triangle out, okay? So you see how that worked, guys? All right, so now we got this nice triangle. So we still have some structural rigidity. Um, but we'd actually glue that shut when we get everything through. I don't like the idea of gluing it shut um, for a variety of reasons, but it's better than having a big bulky mess of wire, okay? First things first, I'm gonna try to get this through. And yeah, you could unplug all this crap, but I'm not gonna go through that trouble. That's a pain in the butt. And it's actually fairly neat right now, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna fight it. So you see what I'm doing? And you see why this is important, because that's where our canopy latches on too. Okay, so everything's glued, so it should more or less not come undone, but we're going to double check everything we're done with this. If you had enough extra length and wire to make it up and over, you would probably want to remove it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Perfect, guys. All right, so now that's all tucked down there. See how much of a difference that makes? It's a huge difference. Immediately, you've got room to deal with stuff. I'm just going to actually tuck that down. I'm not going to do a whole lot more cable management on it for the moment. Unless I run into a situation where I have to. So honestly, I would really like this to be out of the way completely, but I'm thinking it might end up working out pretty nice to be kind of right there. Um, so we'll be able to get to it. Now that Redcon box that we took off, you remember how big that was? Probably wouldn't have done so good here. Now this is a, another structural point that I don't want to give up. So I think in my case, hmm, see that glue? I kind of did a crappy job on that, so I'm going to do that again. That's just holding those things in position so that I can unplug them quick and plug them back in without having to think about it. All right, so this thing, I'm, I'm actually tempted to go ahead and just glue it down here. Because it's positionally going to be pretty good there. So I'm actually going to do that now. Just do a little hot glue here. We'll just... Uh, a little bit more hot glue. And 
we'll just give it a little a little bit of hot glue there nothing much just barely any I'll just use that little piece to kind of set it there man that's hot Obviously, you can peel that off without damaging the receiver at all. And then if you had to go in and do maintenance, like replacing a servo or something like that, you can get at it easy enough. It's not going to be a big issue. And then this little triangular member that we cut out, um, you could actually force that back in around your cables for extra structural strength. Um, we pushed it that way, so this is the way this would go back in. We'll see how bad it is when it goes back in. Yeah, see, that gives us a lot of strength back we can still undo it fairly easily okay so now behind here I'd like to support behind there a little bit so I'm just thinking one of these little triangular chunks eh, let's see what this does oh yeah that's a it's like a perfect fit you know what I need for that he's forceps bent tip forceps just like that. Okay, so we'll just just go real sparing on the hot glue because this is going to melt a little bit. Okay, and we'll just push that down in there. Just let it sit for a second. See that triangle, guys? Just support that a little bit. And this hot glue, I'll just smear that out. Okay, so now let's talk about antenna, antennae. These two antennas, you want to have at 90 degrees of each other, okay? So this is, this is good, that's good, that's good, this is good. But I just need to do it for this plane. I want to try to keep it away from the electronics as much as possible. It's such a small plane, it's probably not a huge issue. I could just stick one down the tail end here. Stick one down the tailpipe. It's a good way to get in trouble. Okay, so right here, actually you guys are gonna think I'm nuts again. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue along the insulated portion. Okay, so now I'm just gonna stick this down in there. You will be able to take that antenna out if you decide to take that antenna out. You see what I'm doing though? I'm just repositioning it so it's lengthwise down the plane. Okay, but I'm sliding down as much of the slack to get it away from the elevator control arm or linkage or whatever you want to call that there. Okay, so that's still hot, but it's good. It's going to stay put. And then our stream relief has been effective still. Now this one I want to do the other direction, like this, laterally. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this in here and find a spot where it's going to make sense and still look nice but be as far to the tail end as possible like that like like that like that okay so you remember you don't want to stress this where it comes out of the sheath the, the exterior sheath on the cable because that's gonna be the weakest point because ultimately somebody stripped that that wire there, so there's a good chance you'll have a little bit of mar into the finish. Even if it's very carefully done, but I can tell you for the price of this device, it probably wasn't very carefully done. This is running hot drip down there. It's nothing like a good hot drip when you need it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my knife. I'm actually gonna spread that hot drip just a little bit. Then I'm gonna lick my finger and stick it down in there, okay? I want to try to get this forced into a 90 degree position, so perpendicular to the last antenna. But I want it to look nice too. Okay, so I think that looks pretty decent. And then I'm actually going to plop just one more drip over here. One little drip. Lick my finger, push it down in there. Okay, so now it's down into the down into the foam. Nice solid mount position. Okay. Looks good. Nice and neat. Easy to get the battery in and out. The only thing is we got to protect this button somehow. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how are you going to protect that button? Well, the button sits up so high. So there's two ways you could do this. One way, you can 
uh, put a bunch of glue around it, not on it, but just around it. You want to make that, that button. So imagine you press the button here, right? Click, okay? You just want to set that button down. So you can actually take some plastic, like these uh, Wendy's cups, um, or something similar. I want something a little thicker, preferably. That's why I keep all these bottles. This is like a baby powder box. And if I can cut it with this, I'll use this. Okay, so this is actually pretty, I use this stuff quite a bit, this uh, type of bottle. Ooh, yeah, that's gonna be, it does cut. Okay, so I'll cut a couple of blanks, probably two. All right, so then I'll just drop those out. Oh, geez, got a ton of them in there. I didn't know there were so many in there already. Okay, so there's two of the plastic pieces. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of powder on them. Big surprise, right? Um, so now I need to make these protect from being able to accidentally press that button. And so I can either poke another small hole in them, or I could just try the glue method. So I think I'm going to just try the glue method. This glue needs to stand up high enough that the battery simply doesn't touch it. Okay, you see, but you want to still be able to operate that button later for changes to settings. Okay. Just lick my finger. Cool the glue quickly. We're going to let that settle down just a little bit. Okay, so the next step, of course, is going to be to put the battery in, uh, give us a little something to keep the battery positionally where we want it. So we need to fill back in some foam. Now, we used a little bit of our foam to mount this stuff back here in a secure manner, and I think that was still a good maneuver. Um, we don't need a lot of foam to hold this battery in place, and you could actually do this in a number of different ways. You could use some Velcro or whatever. Um, in my case, I have some other foams. Okay, so that's not quite set up yet. But our objective is being is being served here. So obviously you can still get to that. Okay, so I'm going to put that glue around the edge. Just like that. Now this time I might need to be a little bit more aggressive about trying to get that glue to cool. And I'm thinking of one problem with this plan, guys. I just thought of it. Dang it, I should have known, and I really, I did before. The battery is gonna get hot. So, usually my plans are good. That was kind of a bad plan. So I'm glad I caught it before it caused a problem. So I'm just gonna find a piece of plastic tubing and I'm gonna cut the tubing. This is gonna be our protection. Because as the battery heats, it may actually displace that glue. And so my apologies, I try to give you guys just the, the best ideas. It's not rocket science here, but. So I'm gonna set this into the, into the A3. And uh, that will definitively and certainly protect the adjustment. Um, but it's actually a little bit too tall. So I'd like to separate this in two pieces. And yeah, using hot glue to position it, I think we're going to be okay because we're not going to actually contact the hot glue now. Okay, so you'll notice the, the dimension of this. It's going to end up being about the same same in the difference between the front and the back dimension. So I'm just going to peel this hot glue off real quick. Get that out of the way. Now I'm going to set this down. This one's got a bit of an angle on it. This one's got a bit of an angle on it. I'm trying to get it to focus. That angle is not going to work to our advantage, but we'll... I think we'll be okay with it. We want to be able to read the numbers. I think we might be able to just do two of these side by side, but I want to be able to see what the gains say. 
So we'll just do it there. Or actually do it here as well. Okay. And you know what? I don't know if I got those flat, even. But I think we'll be even enough to do what we need to do. I mean, the battery doesn't need to sit perfectly level. The more perfectly level, the better. Just, it's easier to know that you've got it in there right. So we'll just have to remember what that one says, but at least the glue is clear. Okay, so now we'll let that run up against both of those plastic rings, and then we'll grab one of these, get it wet, push it up against the plastic, just kind of control that a little better. Okay, so now when this is, when that's totally set up, then we can use a little bit of CA as well. In fact, I think we're set up good enough for what we're going to do next, which is to take a little CA. It's not foam safe, but it'd be fine because it's not getting on the foam itself. Okay, so we'll just go a little bit of glue there. Cardinal rule I broke just there. I didn't have this open before. Okay, so there's the kicker to set that. And we're just gluing down the side of the plastic. Let's get a little dip of that. Oh, one trick too, okay? Smell it? Yep, it's still cooking. You can tell when this stuff is done cooking because it stops smelling. Now, obviously, I'm not trying to huff the stuff. That can be dangerous, so don't do that. Okay, a little drip, a little drip. I think we're going to be good now. <sighs> okay, so those are nice and solid now. Okay, perfect. So we're going to pause it and come right back. All right, folks, so the last thing we have to do, now that we have these both in, is to just uh, find the spot for the battery. And many of you will opt to just put a little Velcro in here so you can positionally move it forward and backward. I prefer to use a little bit of foam, and the foam I use... It's like this, okay? This is just out of industrial scale packaging. I mean, whatever industry you work in, if you work in an industry like this, you'll have something to this extent. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut, um, I'm gonna cut a long piece. This is gonna give us something to squish it in there with. And I might actually have a thinner piece. I just keep these scraps around. Um, some of your wives might threaten to leave you over such things. I'm fortunate to not have one of those wives. Okay, so we're gonna heat this thing up. And our objective is to thin this, but not thin it too much, okay? So then I'm gonna run it down here like this, about half. And I deviated at the end, but that's fine for what we're doing. So that deviation might actually work nice, because I'll I'll force that up here so it slows the battery down from getting up to the front. And then a little bit more heat left. Look at that. So depending on which direction you put the battery, now you don't have to worry about hitting the button, but you'll still be able to hit the button if you need to. And it looks like the gains, I turn them all the way up, so we'll have to probably fiddle with that a little bit. Okay, so make sure we still have good airflow, which we do, it looks like. Need to take this down a little bit further. See what happens when there's no heat. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Shut that off. Put our scrap back. This is like half of what I do is cutting off little chunks until they're into almost nothing pieces. Okay, so now, if this were plugged in, which it's going to be, throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down. I've got a little bit of room left in here. Okay, see, we never did fill this up. Um, that little position there, that's kind of a critical, important position. So, and you also notice throttle doesn't go down with the bulk of the wires. Um, at this point, if I wanted to, I could probably do it, but I don't know for sure that it'll reach, so I don't want to tempt fate. So what I need to do now is I need to probably go ahead and take a little bit of material off of this. 
so that I can stick it back in there, which will give us the room we need to not have that separation. You don't want separation here is your canopy won't stick then. Okay, so we're gonna just take a little bit more off of this. Devil's in the details on these planes, I'll tell you what, guys. It's not like these steps are especially difficult. But I'll tell you what, if you, if you cut corners on this, your plane will fly like crap because you're gonna have problems and you're gonna crash. And you're gonna be like, what a piece of crap. No, it's not a piece of crap. You just didn't wanna take the time to do it. Okay, so just find the triangular direction that's supposed to go. The direction, the triangle is supposed to go rather. I think I'm gonna go the other way with it now. Try to go this way. That's the way, that's the way it came out. Just doesn't wanna slip in there the way I expect. The other thing is I might actually want that under there kind of where the CG ends up. That's kind of crappy though. I don't like that. I do not like having to pull that in and out because you're going to eventually break that off. Hmm. Let's pull this out of the way. Normally I wouldn't hot glue this. Um, actually I'm not going to hot glue that. I'm going to use mucilage for this. Mucilage is the way to go for this type of a joint. You do hot glue, you'll just this will just go to nothing. And I know some of you guys are probably at home watching and marveling, like, how do you possibly take this long to build such a simple plane? Exactly. If you don't get it, you're probably not watching this channel. And if it's too long, just skip ahead or go to the two times speed. Just don't do that and then ask me a million questions on how I did it, because that's annoying. You can ask me a few questions, but not a million. It gets a little hard to reply to that many. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about with that little triangle? That little widening point? The battery is only allowed to slip so much. You don't want it to slip at all, really, if you're honest with yourself. But I want this back just a hair. Okay. So real quick, let's uh, make sure we can fit this. Oh, well, that's perfect. 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 Tuck this down in here, just like that, ish. And then we got that gap still. We're gonna close that gap in just a second here. So slip this under. We're running into something. I think we're running into the battery at this exact moment. So let's slip the battery back just a hair. Mm, and I don't like it when the voltage alarm doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have have to put it up like that probably. Down and under. I'm gonna take this out and see if it fits. And then I think I'm actually hitting my little retention device there. Yeah, that's what I'm hitting, guys. I'm hitting this thing. So I gotta peel it out quick, which is fine. That glue will actually work well now, even better than it had. Take some scissors. Trim this down just a little bit. See how it's like just sticky, like a name tag. That stuff gets increasingly sticky as you do that to it. Which is so counterintuitive if you think about it. You think it should be peeling that stuff off. Well, it just doesn't seem to come off of there. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, so we're still running into something and I believe that something is this. Just push that down a little bit. See how it slides? For a little bit that thing will be rock solid in a few minutes I probably won't even be able to get it off of there so that's why I'm kind of rushing to get this part done see so we're tight we got a gap here so I want to fix that gap right now by pushing this down push this down push that down push that down push that down that'll still work with the battery oh, wait are we hitting our receiver oh shoot are we hitting the receiver yeah, we might be hitting the receiver a little bit. Dang it. Yeah, I think we're hitting the receiver a little bit. So if we are, then I'm just gonna squish this a little bit here. Actually, I'm not gonna squish it. I'm gonna just take out a little bit of material there. 
doesn't need to be a lot. You don't want to get too aggressive with this removing of material, you'll weaken your plane. But if you have to carve out a little teeny bit like this, it's going to be fine. Remember, the stuff you glue in your plane does add strength. Looks like you didn't carve far enough forward. So that's feeling a lot better. I feel like we have a decent level of tightness. Remember, these decals are gonna be all redone at some point. It's like right now I could just take some glue and stick it on here and rip all that crap off. Beautiful. Get a little mucilage leak out there. You can peel that off still to this day. That's pretty cool. I think we're good over here. Okay, so everything fits. Now we just got to get the battery in there, make sure it fits. Yeah, a nice, nice tight-ish squeeze. I'm gonna try it this way now. First things first, let's make sure we can reach. Throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down. Let everything initiate. Okay. The other thing is we got to use the heat shrink on these. Um, after we get our trimming done. I think we already have the elevator trimmed somewhat. No rudder. Okay. Up, up, up. Yep, we're good there. Battery is solid. It's not moving. It does slip under extreme conditions. That's okay, because like if you're shifting it that hard, you're probably already crashed. See, the XT60 can sit there. There's no fear of hitting the button. This will give us a place to put the voltage alarm right there. Slip the lid in. Are we hitting? I think we're touching a little bit on this side, the XT60. So we might have to figure out a way to get that down a little bit into the cavity. Like this. Oh yeah, gorgeous. Off, on, off, heading hold, master gain. So we have full command and control of this thing. So the only thing I haven't tested is throttle in tandem. Testing for brownouts. Throttle cuts on. Guys, this thing is going to fly, and it's going to fly well. I hope that you'll come along for the ride. The Maiden will come very soon, and we're going to have to do some trimming. I guarantee it's some, some trimming here mechanically, so I don't want to do these heat shrinks yet. Um, but after the Maiden, I should be able to get that. I can also move these to the other holes if we want to have a little bit more output. And then, of course in terms of the elevator mechanical trims if necessary. We can unscrew this and get our major mechanical adjustments made and then we'll do trimming also here. The A3L, one of the nice things is every time you plug in the battery, it's gonna recenter the trims automatically. On a Lemon RX 7 channel with stabilization, you have to turn stabilizer on and off. I think it's like three or four or five times in quick succession within one second. Um, and that's very easy to do. So guys, thanks for coming along. This thing looks cool. I'm really excited to fly it now that I've gone through the effort of actually setting it up. Um, I think it's going to be a good flying plane. I think it's going to fly like a rocket ship. Um, so it may not film great. So we'll have to make sure we do this on a cloudy day. But look at that. Excited, guys. Oh, one last thing. Let's set up Expo and then we're done. Okay, so aileron... We'll set it to operate on F, okay? Then we'll set elevator to operate on F. So the neutral setting will be like, 
um, let's just call it 10, then 20, then 30, and we'll drop the rates down to 10, okay? Remember, we don't have elevator on this, so we'll set this to 10, then 20, whoops, then 30 with 90% dual rates. Okay, so we'll start in the middle. We can go up if we need more. We can go down if we need less. No, ready to worry about. Everything should be set up, guys. Um, come back for more. We'll have the main flight anytime soon. As usual, you know. Check the description below. Help support the channel. Buy the stuff that we encourage you to buy from those links. You can help support us financially. And we really hope you come back mostly. Watch and give us some comments. Give us some good feedback. Really appreciate you being here.